welcome to Friday Night Worship with the Sutton team. Most particularly welcome if you're new this evening with us and if you're on online live, it's just lovely to be together and connected in this way. We hope that you've had a really good week and that you are uh, feeling well at the end of the week. It's good to be together. Tonight, Jill is going to be speaking about a very interesting encounter that Jesus had with a rich young ruler who had so much uh, and still knew that he was missing something. And he asked Jesus, what do I need to do to get eternal life? Before he even answered, Jesus looked at the young man. This is one of my most favourite verses in the Bible. Jesus looked at him and loved him. And I believe that this very night, as we're together, Jesus is looking at you and loving you and looking at me and loving me. And I feel the warmth of his love even as I say those words. He has his eyes on us right now, the look of love. Let's pray. Jesus, everything you do reveals your glory, your majesty and your love. Open our eyes to see what you're doing in our lives. Let us marvel together tonight at your good gifts and your wise provision. Your acts are amazing, Lord. We cannot com comprehend the number of blessings you pour out on us day by day. As we gather around you, we pray that you would fill our hearts and our minds and our souls. Transform us, Lord Jesus, and make us more like you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, Friday evening, strangely, uh, because I'm a vicar and I work perhaps harder at the weekends than I do in the week, Friday evening still feels like the end of the week and I have a bit of a Friday night feeling uh, which I've got with me tonight. And sometimes uh, when it's the evening at the end of a working week, it's really good to have a bit of a look back and a review and see where there's been good, say, see where there's been um, things that have not been so good in our weeks and just gather them up before God, uh, especially as we're coming to a time of worship. And so I want to invite you right now to be thoughtful over the week that's passed and particularly thoughtful at this moment about whatever has been good, whatever you're thankful for, grateful for, or want to celebrate in any way tonight. So here is a little crocus. Uh, the first one that I've seen this year, I was given this as a gift at Christmas by my friend Anne, and uh, I planted it immediately after Christmas, and here it is today. It's flowering. So that has given me joy this week. There have been other things as well. Um, big things, small things. I wonder what has given you joy. What are you thankful for? Just catch those things as we're together here tonight. And also in your week, there may have been things that are weighing on you a bit heavily. Here's a stone that I'm just going to hold as I recollect to my own mind the things that have been hard in this week, the things that uh, I wish had happened differently, things I hoped for that didn't work out, uh, things that I look back and I think, oh, I wish I'd done differently myself or said something other than what I said. Uh, so, and there are sad things in our world, maybe in your family life, there are things that are hard. So let's just catch those things as well. Uh, and uh, as I'm holding this, I'm... Uh, kind of waiting with you a bit so that you uh, find what it is that you want to hold before God tonight. So Father God, as we are together, we thank you for everything that's good. We bless you, Father, for the many ways in which you have uh, looked with love on our lives and you've blessed us through the week. Thank you for all the joy, the small things, the big things. Bless you, Father. Thank you. 
And these things that are hard and heavy for us to carry, the sadness and the uh, regret, whatever it is that we're holding, we offer that to you as well. And ask that in this evening, if there's forgiveness that's needed, if there's um, something we're turning away from and uh, wanting to look towards the light, uh, Father, help us. We offer this to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. We now are led in worship by the music group from St. Michael's Church. Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 17. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, 
You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honour your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Jo. Um, I'm an Orden and on placement in the Sutton team. It's good to be with you. So we're going to look together at this passage from Mark chapter 10. This is towards the end of Jesus' ministry. He's on his way towards Jerusalem where he's going to face his death. It follows a big chunk of teaching, including the place of divorce and children in God's kingdom. So he's talking a lot about families and relationships. And as they're walking along, up comes this rich man. In other Gospels, he's described as young and a ruler. But here in Mark's Gospel, we don't get any details except that he's in a hurry. He runs up to Jesus and falls at his feet. Good teacher, he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? There's a little bit of irony going on here. Jesus is travelling towards Jerusalem facing his death, which he knows is going to happen. And this guy comes to him wanting eternal life. And he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What do you do to inherit something? You have to be an heir, a son, a daughter, a closest relative. It's not something you can do. It's something that you have to be. But Jesus humours him. He reminds him of the law, of the commandments that are required of any Jew. And the guy says he has kept the commandments all his life. Isn't that enough? Apparently the guy himself doesn't think it's enough. He's come to Jesus to ask what else he needs to do. For some reason he thinks that what he's done all his life is not enough. And Jesus agrees. Jesus usually says to people, come and follow me. But with this guy, he says, go. Go. Sell all you have and give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. And the guy goes away sad, we're told, because he's very rich. Jesus wasn't making poverty or generosity a requirement for salvation. He's not giving this as a general instruction for everybody. It's a specific instruction for a specific person. Nowhere else in Mark's Gospel does Jesus give this command. He was exposing the man's heart. 
This was the most important thing to him. Was he willing to put Jesus first in front of his riches? And we don't know. We don't know. He went away. He went away sad because he knew what he had to do and he didn't like it. But we don't know whether he came back. How would that conversation have gone if it was you or me kneeling in front of Jesus? What would he ask us to do? Each of us holds onto some sort of marker, something that's important or that gives us identity. Might be possessions, our profession, political stance, gender, position in society or an organisation that we belong to. Even labels that we attach to our religion, Anglican, Catholic, High Church, Low Church, Evangelical, Charismatic, Anglo-Catholic. We may think we're being faithful Christians and quite possibly we are, but are those things getting in the way? Instead of asking Jesus what we need to do, are we asking him how he wants us to be his representatives in his broken world? And Jesus says something, and he says it twice, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus says it twice, so I will. How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The thinking at the time was that the rich were being blessed while the poor had sinned and were being punished. But as he so often does, Jesus turns common belief on its head. He says it will be impossible for the rich to have eternal life. But those who give up wealth or family will receive more. But alongside the more, they also receive some persecution. So it's not all easy for them. So where does that leave us? We're in Lent. An opportunity to reflect. Maybe Jesus wants to know. Am I willing to put myself last so another can be first in the kingdom of God? Am I willing to give up everything for the sake of the gospel, even to the point of suffering persecution? Am I willing to confess my sin and be healed? Am I ready to repent, to turn away from the life I've been living up to this point so that I can devote myself to showing others the way to Jesus? So in this time of Lent, let's reflect. Where we need to, let's repent. And then let's come and follow Jesus. Amen.
as we're thoughtful about the words that we've heard tonight and how they might apply to our own lives, we come to a time of prayer. And I invite you, if you want to, to light a candle at yourself at home, as I've lit one here. Let's pray. The rich young ruler went away sad because he couldn't give up his wealth. It meant too much to him and he was holding on tightly to it. So he missed out on what Jesus could offer him. And so Father, we pray for ourselves tonight, really thoughtful about what we hold on to. Maybe material possessions, maybe things that matter to us a great deal, but that we're really holding on to instead of holding on to you. Could even be other people. And we ask that you'll help us to open our hands and to let go of whatever you ask us to let go of. So that we can really, truly follow you, Jesus. And keep close and keep unencumbered by the things that hold us back. This evening, as we're thoughtful about the world, and maybe people we know, and maybe our own situations, we pray for people who are in physical pain or mental anguish. Anyone that we know who is emotionally bruised and broken. We pray for those anywhere in this world today who fear tomorrow who are anxious, and we ask for your presence with them and your healing power around and within. We pray for any who feel forgotten or forsaken. We pray for wisdom, for all who need wisdom beyond their own, which includes each of us. As I hold this flame, I invite you at home to call to mind something, someone that you really want to just hold in the light tonight and ask for Jesus' look of love to be on them and for them to know it. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We hope that it's been really good for you to be together with us this evening. We have loved your company, and we look forward to meeting again. And I'm going to pray a blessing as we part company. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Deep peace of the Prince of Peace. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you forevermore.